Hello. Good evening, everyone. Hello, good evening, sir. So um, we'll start after five minutes. So uh, meanwhile, if you have some question, you can ask me. Today I'm not well, so maybe my uh, voice is a little change. Um, yes, sir. Yes. So, uh, welcome back after a long weekend. Uh, by sorry. That was my voice, I think. Okay, um, just two more minutes. I, I would like to know if you have some uh, questions or any issue in the previous uh, classes so that I can answer you all the things because 
today uh, syllabus will be completed but anyways we we going to keep another class that is just for your uh, doubts doubts and uh, one more thing i want to clear in that that is like career growth so which would not be completed today uh, most probably by monday would be the last class Hmm. Okay, then I am moving ahead with the my new topic. So that is automation and programmability. See, nowadays. There are so many. <coughs> One second. Sorry, just. Hmm. So, so many uh, network devices are there. And if we're going to manage it like one by one, it will take uh, a long time. Also, there could be like human error. For example, um, I have a site hmm? and I want to block one IP. I want to block one IP here so that this IP should not come in my network. Now, IP is single, router is one. I can log into the router and uh, make the ACL which is fine for one router it is okay I can do it but for example there are 500 routers if I will do it like one by one definitely it's gonna take a long time and secondly there could be human error like maybe someone is missing the IP or someone missing the router or something like that so there could be a possibility for human error now, other thing I can have, this is like traditional way. Now you have DNA. We spoke about already, right? The, the DNA, WLC. DNA, WLC, we spoke about controllers. This is for wireless and this is for wired one. And now I am talking about the wired one. But unless we already did. So you have 500 router and in your controller, you are making the template where you are adding this IP and the list of devices you have. Select all the 500 devices and apply this template. Simply within a couple of seconds, or maybe minutes, your all 500 devices can be configured with your update. So this is the power of automation. Automatically, system will configuring on behalf of you, not only configuring, centralizedly it's gonna tell you like, what is the status of each device. Hmm? So, How this thing work? How this automation thing work? Like I told you like, okay, now we don't need to configure like one by one devices. We're gonna configure or control just one controller. Rest everything he will do. Hmm? So now, if 
you are using, for example, SSH on this router from your computer or switch, you have configured SSH or maybe any other router, switch, computer, or from here also, you can do the SSH once your ping reachability is there, your routing is there, then you can do it from anywhere in the network. But for example, ping eligibility or the routing is not there. Can you do SSH? Answer is no, we cannot. Why? Because connectivity I do not have. So same thing, what I'm talking, your, this, uh, what do you call, software defined network because software defined network is what software is going to manage your network software driven network software defined network we call it basically your your network is going to be drive by software now you don't need to do like one by one so sdn will work once your connectivity is there that connectivity with cables or with IP routing protocols. So ping reachability is required, then SDN is, is coming, like SSH. SSH is will come in the picture when your connectivity is fine. So we call that connectivity is underlay connection. When your underlay is done, then overlay would work then overlay will work. So overlay is what? Overlay is your, this software defined network or whatever the solutions are there. There are so many solutions available under the SDN. SDN is a family, let me tell you. See, you might have heard uh, under the SDN only, you might have heard SDA, which is used for LAN network. SDA used for LAN network. Then you might have heard ACI, under the SDN only ACI, which is used for data center. Nexus, which is we was talking about, right? So this is part of ACI, like from one switch you are managing other switches. Then SD WAN you spoke, you maybe heard about. So this is coming for WAN. But all these solutions, SDA, ACI, SD WAN, they all are under SDN, Software Defined Network. So, Underlay overlay. VPN is also overlay. If your internet is not working, then VPN would not work at all. Right? First internet should work, then VPN will work. So VPN is a overlay, for example. Then this one I was talking about SDA, ACI, and uh, SD WAN. The major thing about this software defined network is no separation of your control plane and data plane. What is that? Let me talk, talk about. See, I'm talking about the router, just a traditional router. Hmm? Where you logged in? we call that management plane. Management plane. And in this plane, you are doing all the configuration. When you do the configuration, for example, routing protocol, 
then this protocol will talk to another router. He will exchange the information. Where it is happening, this exchange thing. This exchange thing is happening in the control plane. Management plane where you log in. You are doing the configuration. After configuration, router will talk to another router where this is happening in the control plane. So in the control plane, he will maybe talking to multiple routers. He will, he will be able to understand, okay, I have one way this, second way this, third way this. Like my I have multiple option to reach my destination. He will calculate which is best. Whatever would be best. So first of all, whatever like available routes, he will create a list we call RIB, routing information base, where if may have three routes available, he will add all three. But after the calculation, he will figure out one route best route. So that final list will create, we call FIB, forwarding information base. Routing information base, forwarding information base. So he will create one FIB and will give it to data plane. Now data plane is what? All your interface is part of data plane. Like from one interface it will receive, it will go to the fabric, whatever the behind the switch um, motherboard interfaces circuits are there then look for this final list and will go out from another interface we call forwarding information base so basically who is using the brain control plane control plane is using the brain data plane is just following it right and if I have If I have 500 routers, it means 500 management plane, 500 control plane, and 500 data plane. If I make them separate, like the control plane, I made it separate. So I say one control plane and 500 data plane. So this way, and second way is this. You made it separate, control plane and management plane, oh, sorry, control plane and data plane, you separate it. So earlier, this was part of same box when they was communicating inside the box only. Now they are separate and still they are communicating, with, but with what? With links, with the API. API we spoke about, right? So API is application programmable interface, which is nothing, just the software you can say. So now you have your router, but he don't have brain. You have router, he don't have brain. You have router, he don't have brain. There is a controller. He have the brain. He will be connected with your router. Instead of Multiply like 500 times or in different brains. He have whatever information he will say. He have whatever information he will say. And DNA or the controller basically will use his brain and will give them final list. And they will follow it. This way, two, two benefits I have. One, when I no need to manage like multiple devices, all I can do here. Second benefit is my packet will not be spend more time in every router. So I have only centralized brain now. So performance of my network will be better. This control plane 
or the controller you have a con controller we call management plane this is separate box earlier it was part of same router you have control plane this is separate router i mean separate box not router separate box then you have data plane which is again separate uh, router i mean again i'm saying router separate box here also they are using API for data transmission and here also. Upside we call North API. Downside we call South API. If I go to my packet tracer, they are connected via API. API is what? Application programmable interface, which is nothing, just a link between two server or two applications to exchange the information. Then northbound API, southbound API, which I was talking to you. In API, we have so many, but one of the famous, which is used in your SDN, that is REST API. So what is REST API? It stands for Representational State Transfer. What it does? So basically, Mm. So what it will do, you know, what I was talking, I forgot. REST API, yeah. Mm -hmm. In the database, data format is little bit different. If I will give the same data to my like user side, then it will not maybe properly fit or readable. So data is same, but its request is coming from, from mobile, from laptop, from Android, from Linux, from Windows, from TV. The same data is requested by so many devices, different screen size, yeah, different platforms. So when I, when, when I am picking the data and giving to, to my uh, user side, it should be properly fit. And that is where REST, REST API work. It work well with the HTTP protocol. So basically if some data is requested from the browser, that data is processed by REST API so that it can properly fit. And most of the time you have seen like same website is working well on the mobile devices in different uh, alignment basically, but uh, whatever they are giving, it should be like properly fit and visible or readable on your mobile devices. And then you uh, use on the tablet, it's different. Use on the uh, laptop desktop, it is different. So because of that REST API. So in your Controller, when you are logging in, you are logging in via browser. So when you are using the browser, then REST API is working to, to uh, transmit or gain access. Now, another side, like, uh, from your browser, if you are accessing your uh, controller, you are using HTTP or this. Sir. Um, REST API. Hmm? But when your controller is talking to your system, it's using a protocol called netconf, netconf or SSH. 
so it has two option netconf and ssh in the rest one more thing there is a like any software no it's like it, just a term used by software which is nothing just the feature like uh, crud c r u d c means create does your software have the power to create something read is the uh, like uh, it can read as well write update if there is already some value it can go and edit and update it so delete right so these all are features which like any software is using these terms like create update delete but when you talk about rest it's not using these terms it's using different one maybe for the same i mean same work same task but um, for create it calling post for read it calling get for update it calling put for delete it calling delete that is same yeah so basically just a different terms um, used in the rest api and rest everything is same then you have in the software only right like automation or the software basically how you will manage maybe in your class only someone was asking me like how to manage um, the configuration files right uh, see i may have couple of routers or um, not only router like so many computers um, switches firewall server so many other devices what i'll do i'll take a backup of the configuration so that if tomorrow i need to replace the box i can upload this backup and my device will be in use or in function quickly and i took this backup file most probably it coming with the date and i am adding like so many files hmm? after maybe one month or one year i want to i want to open this file and i want to see like what is the change between this and that if this is a change then who made it who did this configuration so this these are just simple example which i'm telling you is actually not easy to manage without any tool if we think about like manual stuff then manually it gonna be a pain to manage these all things we are using some software we call configuration management mechanism configuration management mechanism basically that mechanism which is going to manage your configuration files so what or how this work so basically puppet chef and ansible these are just couple of software names these are just couple of software names which we have um, figured out in this um, like slides but what i want to show you or tell you what is the difference between these you take any one you take like any software what it will do it will it will create like multiple files some of the files for human understanding some of the files for machine understanding right and some of the files to create these files so it will create like many type of files 
and if I go here no puppet chef and see well you see puppet is creating manifest so manifest is what manifest is it's a human readable file hmm? manifest is for human then it's creating like a resource class module what is that these are the component for manifest these are the file for that file then you have templates these are the file for device understanding right so basically they are creating like multiple files so that this is how any software mechanism is managing the files or the configuration then chef is also doing but because this is a different protocol i mean different tool so he may use different terms he's he's also creating the files but not keeping the same name right he's saying uh, resource recipe cookbook and all but again the same thing some files for human understanding some files for machine understanding class module class module was nothing the component small file of that manifest file here it is component of the manifest and what is manifest manifest i just show you human readable file manifest is what manifest is human readable file then another famous is ansible why famous because most of your proto uh, this tools you know like chef and uh, puppet i was talking that was available only for linux but ansible is available for windows as well linux as well mac as well or maybe other platform too so basically almost for everyone it is available then he's also creating the files and giving like the names like playbook uh, inventory template variable blah blah the big difference big difference is here which i wanted to show you see that is okay like any um, uh, software you are using but what you need to understand more is this thing agent and agentless agent and agentless what is that for example For example, your network have 500 routers. Mm -hmm. If you say agent, agent one you want to use, then you have to go on every router. You have to configure this agent. You have to configure this agent. And if you go with agent less, then your router should have just SSH enable, which is by default. In, I mean, not by default, but usually you enabling it and that's all you no need to go and configure the ss uh, this one agent or something we call agent and agentless so agent would be what one piece of configuration on your every device where he will pull the information related to device your puppet chef will pull the information from agent and how you will configure this puppet and and um, i mean how it will uh, configure the devices or uh, access the devices that is via rest api and ansible is famous because it's not required any agent and all you have just uh, ssh or the net conf uh, net conf, uh, net conf protocol SSH is very common for all the uh, uh, devices. 
and uh, new devices nowadays coming like sd wan devices or something like that they are supporting netconf as well and he is going to push the commands not pulling from the agent so that is the big difference the rest everything is same okay then you have json anyone aware about what is json no okay see you might have heard sql what is that what is sql structured query language yes data structure language basically how you are going to manage the database so json is that like sql or no sql it uh, basically it is not using any queue method it's a database management now in the json no they are using another method which we call key value pair system what is that key value pair system let me talk about that every file we save in the database no we call it record record yeah for every record unique id it's using as key what is that basically that information which would not be same for example phone number right phone number would be different for everyone um, employee id email id these these are some information which would be like unique information and he is using as a key for that record so if, if someone is searching with the key it can easily provide that result then value pair system so value pair system he is using which is content within the record like name maybe name could be like common right if i say ram so there may be five or six ram uh, working in my company so if someone will search with the value then it will come like multiple result will come out and if someone is using the key then very few or maybe one record will come out that is what you call like key value pair system another beautiful thing like data could value could be anything text number any special object one beautiful thing about json is you can narrow down your search for example where it's mentioned one second Ah, multiple pairs huh? so basically no what is that if you may be like searching for something for example you search um, ccna so it may provide you thousand result even though google is using same thing right it may provide you thousand result now you have to track your file from thousand numbers so which would be definitely more time take it if i would put like comma and then i would say uh, 200301 means like only latest ccna then it will not provide you 1000 result it will provide you 700 result so which was like non not related to 200301 that will be removed then i say question then 
out of this 500 maybe 400 uh, out of this 700 maybe 400 because related to this only question and answer related to ccna so basically you can filter you can sort what you want with comma even google in the google if you are using the same thing no uh, let me go to You say like CCNA. And enter. You see how many result it is providing you? It's a big number. Huh? From here to here. And starting which is 292 then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is what it is providing you. If I say CCNA with the Microsoft, so some some record where it has like two three options. You see, result has been reduced. It was two ninety two, now just ninety nine. So number has been reduced, right? So basically you can filter with this comma. That is what I was trying to show you. Huh. That is your JSON basically. JSON is nothing, simply the database management. Hmm? And here your syllabus is completed. Congratulations, everyone. And now you can ask me the questions. Okay, now you can ask me any question. Someone's asking was related to OSPF multi area, right? I will try to look for that one by Monday, anyways, we're gonna keep one class. <laughs> if today I could answer you uh, some of the things, I will answer. But otherwise, the additional things, right? If if that is something part of um, the CCNA we covered, then I will cover it. I will uh, try to answer it now itself. If that is like additional something then I'll try to uh, answer it by Monday. So, but you can give me your questions now so that, so that over this weekend, I can, I can look for better answer, right? OSI layer, OSI layer we covered, very nicely we covered. All the seven layers, what is the role of each layer we covered? Maybe you was not in the class, but we covered that. Yes, guys. OSP, uh, this OSA layers we covered, no? Yeah, covered. So, uh, Darshan, uh, I think uh, you can check some recordings. Yeah, I don't even know like which class that was, but yeah, we covered it. Maybe um, in the second week, I think we covered it. So today topic, any practical where to all this can be shown. No, today there was not a practical only um, this demo thing, right? So not a practical, um, just understanding of the stuff. Then uh, yeah, Monday onwards, no class. No, Monday there is a class. See, I am looking for your questions. huh? So you give me your questions now. If there would not be any question, then I no need to put any class. If there would be some questions which, which I will look for like a, a, a valid answer for that, right? Maybe I need to study as well, right? So there is nothing wrong in that. 
uh, if I would study, it's my benefit only. So if some some stuff we covered already, then I will uh, try to answer now. Of otherwise, if I could not answer you now, then I will try to do it by Monday. But if there is no question from you, then I no need the next class. Then today would be last class. You got my point? If there would be some questions pending, then I will keep the Monday class. If there would be no questions, then I no need to keep the another class. Then today would be our last day. Uh, sir, uh, you said Monday like career guidance, you will keep one class, right? Yeah. So I am looking at your uh, what you're saying, Dharmendra. Yeah, that maybe you was the one or someone, uh, dual VLAN, someone was asking, right? I will try to look for this one by Monday. Like one port. Uh, can you sign in the two VLANs that that is possible, but I will look like how. Okay. How many days? That I'm not sure. I think I think one year. Maybe uh, networking's uh, told you something related to that. I think of one year, but just check with them. Uh, sir, okay. I asked a networking that uh, how we can be connected each other with officially with other uh, students and uh, faculty. So they gave yeah. one link. Uh, uh, are you using that? Uh, I'm not sure. Can you share share that link? Uh, yeah. Okay. One minute. So the link is on your name only. They have said that uh, a harsh uh, class, something like that they have made. Oh, mm -hmm. Group discussion forum. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, I pasted it here in the group. Okay, let me see. Will it take me? No, you see. Hmm. I never used, but yeah, I'm going to create it now. Yeah, okay. I logged in that link one.
Hmm. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, in this group, you can also tag me, but maybe a little delay would be there in the respond, right? Sometime I'm in the training, so I'm not uh, using this like every day. Maybe uh, once in a week, I'll uh, look for that one. So, sir, is it possible like after Monday's class, uh, uh, when we have, we will uh, focus ourselves? Actually, I have purchased these two books, CCNS, uh, two books recently, it has come. So uh, in between, if I get some doubt or uh, uh, after completion of the both the books, so, uh, we definitely I will have some questions, right? So how will we contact you via networking? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So basically, uh, because you'll have experience like other classes also you would have taken, right? So how it is happening for other students who are seriously looking sure. for this uh, exam? Uh, see, uh, you talking about the exam perspective? Yeah, yeah. So exam is not tough for CCN. It's very easy actually. Maybe you bought the books that was not required at all, but that's okay if you bought it. So I have one book as well, which uh, I was I used to use maybe long time back. Thor Lamley. Which one you bought? Uh, it's paperbacks. Uh, uh, this one, uh, CCN official cert guide. Just one second. Who is the writer? Writer, uh, well, uh, Wendell Odom. Okay. This is the right book, right? Or yeah, yeah, good one. So, is there mention two zero zero three zero one? Yes, yes. Two volumes are there. Volume one, volume two. So, uh, two two zero zero three zero one, and other one is also same two zero zero three zero one. And this That's is good. I think. Uh, December 2020 or something uh, published. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the volume of the book is very good. If you can give some guidance how to, uh, uh, is, is it is it like in our school days, how it used to be our college days, like uh, we know in this topic, this much marks will come. So is there anything specific in this CCN also, like topic wise? Uh, hey, um basically topic wise i told you like percentage we have right so, yeah uh, let me open that one second um how much total questions are coming in your ccna uh, uh, i'm not sure <laughs> i have not gone through uh. one second let me open that Google is saying 100 to 120 questions in 120 minutes.
so yeah assume it like 120 question for 120 minutes but uh, score is total 1000 score which you have to get like 800 score huh so now cisco is giving you some beautiful thing which is um, bonus score but not bonus score something they called it uh, like there would be 300 scores added in your account so it means only half of the question if you make it correct then you will be pass so usually we say like 80 percent is required but out of this 80 percent 30 percent they are giving you why because um, when you're booking the exam and then you are um, sitting for the exam and then uh, they're gonna like verify you only uh, maybe they will check around you if you are giving it from your house so is there nothing nearby you you are not using any calculator right so after verification of all these no your 300 points will be added then you are giving the answers and uh, according to your answers keep uh, points will be keep adding and uh, uh, like if your first question answer is correct and for example, that would be uh, for 10 numbers or 10 points or maybe 100 points, whatever. So uh, then 10 would be added. You got one point. So it will start from three, three, 300 points. So um, then half of the question um, easily can be cracked through, right? So passing is not tough. So it's like by default 300 they will add or? Let's say I do a mistake, uh, just asking. No, no. Uh, by default, it will be added. By default, in the sense, uh, after your verification. Sorry? By default, in after, sense? after your verification, like you are appearing for the exam. Mm -hmm. So after they will verify you. And after that, once it is done, then uh, your exam will start. So before start your exam, it uh, 300, uh, 300 points will be added. Okay. Got it, got it. So uh, percentage wise, uh, this one you have, so you got it? Yeah, uh, percentage wise. Hmm. So, uh, twenty twenty percent would be in the first two domain, twenty five in the third domain. So routing uh, would have like more questions. So switch would have like twenty percent of the course. Then remaining domain four, five, six is like ten, ten four percent. Okay, this is not there anywhere in the uh, list. Ah, okay. Examination weightage. Twenty five. Okay, so uh, that's uh, all. One question, sir. Sir, uh, this one yeah. starting number one domain one is the ten percent or twenty percent? It's uh, clockwise going, right? So one twenty percent. Twenty percent. Domain one, two, three is twenty. Maybe the third domain is twenty fifth, twenty five percent. And uh, domain like security is is going to be fifteen percent. And the other two domains are 10, 10%. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you for this. Okay. Um, then last class going to be by Monday. Anyway, syllabus is completed. That class is just for uh, career growth and some of the answers I'll try to give.
So rest everything is done from my side. By Monday, you can give me, um, you can say me bye-bye. Yeah. All rightly. I'll see you by Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.